Hello there! So today we're going to start the installation of the water maker. So what I have here is a Spectra Ventura 200T. So that's what we're going to be installing on this boat. It's much bigger than I thought and the first thing you're going to have to plan out is just where to put things. And I took a week or so to just plan it out and measure things to see where it will go. So anyway let me show you first what's in the box. This huge box which I got from a distributor of Spectra. So this itself, this is the Clark pump. That's the Clark pump portion there on the front side. And this is the actual osmosis filter back here. This is the osmosis filter. This is all just one unit. Again, look at the size of it. So like three hand spans there. And then this is the feed pump. This is what's gonna push the water in to the filter. And they gave us 25 feet, actually two sets of 25 feet of 5.8 inch hose, which everything is 5.8, so that's consistent. And this is the servicing kit, servicing hoses, which I didn't know it would come with. And it's kind of nice to know it has that. This is the accumulator pump, which will be next to the Clark pump. And in here, there's the uh, there's the main filter, the pre-filter, and it's one of these filters that go in there. And the part that I didn't know that it came with is the raw water strainer. So there's the raw water strainer, and it came with all the tubing for the output line as well as well as the connections, which I did not expect. I did not expect too many parts on the output side. So this is going to be a little easier because I didn't know what parts to get and it came with it. Anyway, this is a complex project and the first thing I got to figure out is how to get the raw water, which happens to be this hose here, into the water maker pump and install its own separate water strainer, raw water strainer. This water strainer here, this line here, goes to the air conditioning unit. So this is actually an air condition set up already for the only available through hull we have here. So I don't want to take the boat out to put a new through hull. I'm just thinking about reusing that through hull and the way I was going to do it is with this. So this is a T. So this is a 5 inch T. Now the air conditioner is only running in AC mode. So the uh, chances of running the air conditioning and the water maker at the same time are kind of unlikely. So what I'm going to do is just use this to, like that and then feed this to the air conditioner line and the rest will go to the water maker and then I can turn the valve off. So when it's being used with the valve off on one of them, it'll be dedicated to that function. So hopefully that's not going to cause any problem. So the plan right now is to run the hose down here for the raw water up there under the settee and then it's going to go through the bathroom here and you can see the water runs in there and then what I'm planning on doing then is putting the water maker in here in the back so I have this back area this is there's a back storage here it's a lot of room here I'm not using this space so I'll put the water maker in here. It's going to occupy pretty much half the space here. So in general installing a water maker doesn't seem to be too complicated. It's really more about planning it out and then having all the parts you need to execute. So it's going to be more of uh, just heavy lifting and reaching corners and so on. There's some things I haven't figured out yet. Do I need to drill into the tank or put a T into the intake. The intake is like pretty big pipe and then the intake, the output from here is this very small one fourth inch uh, pipe. So don't know what I need to do there. So that's kind of last minute. If I can get the rest of it installed then uh, that should be so easy to figure out at that point. I'll, I'll have time to think about it. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do is install this Y valve to split the raw water intake into the part that goes into the air conditioner 
and the part that goes into the water maker. So I'm going to do this first. Here we go. Turn off the water supply. Okay, so I turn off the water supply first. The raw water valve so we don't get water and sink the boat. So now you see why I had to do a pump to pump the water from the bilge because that's salt, that's salt water. We're going to feed this into, this is the intake and this is the two valves for the outflow. So I'm going to shut this for now here and then I'll hook these two up. Okay, so that's in place. I'm gonna test it to make sure the air conditioner is running fine. I just have to tighten these. Okay, the air conditioner is running right now. You're gonna hear it and the water's flowing. So it looks like that's a success. So that's gonna feed into the water maker here. And if I turn the valve on, it's gonna go. So I have these lines that I can use and this should be 5 eighths. Yeah, it is. So that's going to be fed into the water maker. Okay, first showstopper. So I'm trying to figure out how to get the hose from the bilge all the way up to where the other hoses are. And I can't figure it out because it's kind of zigzag here. So that's a much more serious problem here. I'll show you. But this is a showstopper for the moment. I got to think about it. Okay, so I got to get the hose from here all the way through here and through there. Now, seems simple, but when I looked underneath, there's no easy way to get there because between that point and where it reaches here, it's over here. So that's like two feet. Two feet where I don't know how to cross two feet because I can't see it. <laughs> so I would like figuring out if I need to punch a hole in the wood, but yeah, so looking for alternatives here. Okay, so I was able to poke through there and it came out over here. So there's hope. Okay, so I managed to get Dyneema through both ends. And now, I don't know, because that's a pretty big piece of pipe. So I gotta figure out how to, how to attach that. Okay, I can't believe it, I got it through. What I did is make one end pointy and then that worked. Wow, took an hour. Okay, onward. That's finished, so that's hooked up already. So the raw water, there's the valve, then it goes into the raw water strainer for the water maker. That's the raw water strainer for the air conditioner. So that's to the air conditioner. 
which is running right now so you can hear it in the background. So this part is done and then I got all this hose here that I got to feed through there in that direction all the way to the back of the boat. So day two. So what I've done so far is to test to see if the line can go all the way to the back because I have to drill a hole here. So before I drill the hole I want to test it to make sure there are no problems and I was able to and this was fed all the way through the bathroom to the back no problem so I can pull it back out and then I know it's going to work because I just tested it. Okay, all set, got it in. Now I just got to feed it to the back. Okay, that's done. <clears throat> and I got it through here. Last leg, last leg. Okay, the last step is to get it through here and unfortunately I can't reach it. So I got to reach the corner, so I'm going to take off the door. Now I can reach it. Okay, success. I got it back here, which is the back of the boat. So, time to attach the actual pumps and things. As it turns out, I don't have a lot of space, so I'm just going to mount that here and then mount that somewhere up here. And then I'm going to put the Clark pump over on this side. So that's the plan right now. Okay, so just to check that we're following the rules here, this line cannot be too long. They gave us 25 feet and I'm probably at 19 feet here. So after all that, so and that's just going to be plumbed down here in the bottom. The other rule is that this feed pump should be as close to the water line as possible. And that's the water line right here. I believe that's the water line here and it can't be more than three feet above the water line and looks like we're about a foot above so that should be following the rules as well okay so I plumbed this in everything here is 5 8 so this is 5 8 and that first opening there is 5 8 I believe that's 5 8 as well for the output side so at least they're consistent it's all 5 8 here and I think the output side is all one-fourth okay so I got this mounted the pre-filter so from the feed pump to the pre-filter and then to the accumulator pump which I can put over here and then the Clark pump I can put on the other side okay all done that's the electrical junction and uh, that's done as well. So this is from the pre-filter and then goes to the accumulator or one of these and then this is the one that goes one of these goes into the Clark pump. Then the other side of this is supposed to go to the gauge. Not sure how to do that yet so I'm just tightening this and then going from there. Okay, so all the plumbing now from the raw water to the, all the 5 8 lines are all in and all of this have Teflon tape on it. 
so they all have Teflon so they should be leak proof. This is high pressure here so this is a high pressure area the one from the uh, raw water is not so this one this one is this one is not not high pressure but from the pump on that's like 60 psi and then it increases in pressure so there's still something that I got to put on this to attach it to the gauge and so this is the gauge here it's got to go to the back of this so not sure how that works yet and not sure where to mount the gauge probably somewhere along here okay figured it out so I mounted this here so you can see the setup because there's some tubing that has to go in there from the end of the accumulator so from here a one-fourth line goes to there so I figured out the parts and then this is from the uh, product the product line so all these are now one-fourth lines I'm not going to attach them right now but they're all set to go for now that's it for that side so basically the only remaining part here is the Clark pump which goes on the other side and the power down here I can temporarily pass water into the shower here so for testing I don't have to plumb it completely so here's the last part and that is to install this on this side so the rest of it is on this side and the Clark pump is going to go here and then I just have to plumb it and I'm going to mount it vertically it doesn't matter what the position is according to the instructions so it can be put in any position so I was trying to figure out how to mount the Clark pump and I accidentally dropped it over here and lo and behold it fits so I'm just going to leave it there because it's really hard to mount it by myself vertically so this is perfect this is exactly where I wanted to put it anyway but the measurements given in the manual said it doesn't fit in there so there it fits okay so I've done all the fittings so all the fittings are here and this is the output it's all just going into the shower right now and all the fittings are in there this is the only one that I haven't hooked up yet this is the brine discharge and again for now I'm just gonna put it into the shower drain Okay, I'm draining the excess water from the bilge. So I want to show you what I did with a product side, so product water, and how I did this. So they actually give you this connector here, the quick connect. This has a 3-8 thread. The problem is I don't know exactly how to tap this particular screw or thread the uh, size into this plastic water tank here so what I did is I just got a uh, drill tap combination for 3 8 so this is a 3 8 hole it's a 3 8 part and so this is slightly smaller than a 3 8 and then I tapped it the tap is not the same thread pattern as this but it's very this is very soft material so I was able to just kind of force it in there and then kind of screw it in tight anyway even though the thread pattern is not the same this is not a high pressure connection here because it's there's no pressure actually so I was able to put it in with pressure and it's actually pretty tight in there so for safety I put butyl tape around it but it doesn't actually need any special thing in there so that's how I did a product side no one likes to drill a hole in their boat but here it goes okay so there I can see the ocean and we're not below the water line so we're okay okay I got my butyl tape wrapped around the through hole and then a mallet so, so I can push it in okay so that's attached 
But this is only a temporary fitting because this is actually the service hose. Because I need a different kind of connector in here. I don't have one right now. So, but that's no big deal. So, I can use this for now. So the last step is just to do this. And run the hose in there to the water supply. So this was very easy to feed the line in there. To attach this to the water supply, I had to get some parts from Whale. So Whale Quick Connect. I didn't know what to use, but I saw those other connections there. And that is one half. to flush this has to be on flush and then run this needs to be on off Okay, so I got it all done. It took about four days and a lot of that is just not knowing what parts to get and having to wait for the parts to arrive. So just as an instruction for those people doing it because it's not very clear, you have to figure out the size of the connections from the raw water to the product side and the input of fresh water for the flush side and they all have different sizes and it doesn't come with some of that. So let me just explain. So all the raw water side is 5 8 internal diameter ID. 5 8 ID for, and it comes with that. It comes with 50 feet of 5 8 ID hose. So you don't have to worry about the 5 8 side or the raw water side. It also comes with a product side. The product water is 1 4th OD. So it comes with a black nylon Thing with all the quick connects for a one fourth inch out, outer diameter or outside diameter. The problem is the freshwater input side. So in this case, the fresh water is used to flush. And as it turns out, it really needs to be one half ID all the way. So I used the whale quick connect fitting, which is five eighths into the fitting or 15 millimeter but the barb connection is one half. So everything has to be one half. So one half inch to the charcoal filter. It's one half inch ID. And that's the confusing part here. So based on what I've said here, somebody should have an easier time. So this is probably one of the more detailed videos you'll see about installing a water maker. Because there's so many holes in what I've watched on the internet. So I decided that this should be more detailed and all the holes plugged in. So anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.